After many years of retirement, Dr. Doolittle must reunite with a group of animals and embark on a journey full of tigers and dragons to recover the fruit of Eden and save the Queen of England. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2020 movie, Doolittle. In Berkshire, a doctor called John Doolittle became very successful thanks to his ability to talk to animals, which led him to give up medicine to work as a vet. Thanks to his enormous fame, the doctor was given a sanctuary by the Queen of England herself, which he used as a consulting room for all creatures in need of help. There, Doolittle met Lily, an explorer with whom he fell in love, taking her on journeys around the world to save animals that had no way of defending themselves from human evil, adopting them as part of his family. And so they lived happily for many years, until one day Lily decided to go on a journey accompanied only by Polly, the couple's macaw. However, during the adventure, the girl ended up having an accident and perished alone in the middle of the sea, causing Doolittle to stop seeing people and isolate himself from the world. Many years later, a young man called Tommy is duck hunting with his uncle when he spots a squirrel in the top of a tree. Wanting him to concentrate, the man asks the boy to wait for the ducks to fly so he can shoot one of them, but when the time comes, Tommy closes his eyes and misses the shot on purpose. Even so, he ends up grazing the squirrel and his uncle hands him a knife to finish the job, but the boy refuses and starts following Polly, who claims to know who can help him. Following the macaw, the boy ends up in front of Dr. Doolittle's gate, but as he knows that no one will answer him, the macaw takes the boy to the secret entrance, allowing him to enter the place which is full of wild animals. At the sanctuary, Tommy gets lost from Polly and ends up falling into a trap while trying to escape from Yoshi, an extremely playful polar bear who starts laughing in his face. Inside the house, Doolittle is woken up by the animals who warn him about the presence of the human trapped in the ropes, but because of his social phobia, he refuses to interact with Tommy, hiding in a corner while he waits for the boy to leave. Outside, the boy is still in the trap when he is spotted by Lady Rose, the Princess of England, who decides to take a break and help the boy before continuing with her mission. Together, the two go to the main entrance where they start knocking on the door, but as Doolittle refuses to open it, Polly manages to convince the gorilla Chi Chi to take the visitors, only for him to end up being frightened by Tommy and fainting in the entrance, leaving the humans to go on alone. Inside, Lady Rose finds Doolittle hiding under a table and reveals that he has been summoned in Buckingham Palace to treat the Queen, who is very ill. Even so, the doctor remains firm in his isolation and tries to expel the princess from his mansion, but is interrupted by Tommy who shows him the wounded squirrel. Very curious, Doolittle asks how the animal got hurt and the boy tells him that he shot it, leaving the veterinarian even more disappointed with humanity. Nevertheless, he accepts the request and helps the little rodent, asking his wild assistants to prepare the operating room and apply anesthesia to the patient. Once everything is ready, he puts on his lab coat and asks Dab Dab to pick up the forceps, but the duck can't tell the difference between the instrument and a piece of celery or a carrot, delaying the operation. Outside the operating room, Tommy sees Doolittle communicating with the different species and says he wants to live there to become the doctor's apprentice, but Rose warns him that it was the queen who gave the land as a nature reserve, so if she perishes, the deed will revert to the British crown and the sanctuary will be closed forever. Even though Doolittle is extremely reluctant, he knows he has nowhere else to take his animals and decides to set off for the palace to help the monarch, but before he leaves, Jip and Cheat Chi immobilize and anesthetize the doctor, leaving him unconscious so that they can clean his beard, which has become a literal rat's nest. Some time later, the vet meets the teenagers in the main hall and tells them that he has decided to go to Buckingham Palace to help the queen, but as the boy is not part of the mission, he orders Tommy to go home. Downstairs, the boy walks to the exit and finds Lady Rose's carriage, deciding to hide in the trunk and sneak into the royal house. Unaware that the boy is in hiding, Doolittle collects his personal belongings while the animals prepare his medical equipment, but one last thing remains to be determined, his means of transportation. Completely out of his mind, Doolittle feels he can't travel in a simple carriage and tries to tame Plimpton, a striped ostrich who gives the doctor a sweeping kick, but Yoshi manages to convince the bird to carry the vet on his back, leaving room for the other animals in Lady Rose's carriage. After some time on the road, they finally arrive at the palace and Yoshi is the first to go down, startling the guards, but the princess soon appears and tells them that they are guests of the queen and should therefore be treated as such. Just then, Doolittle arrives with Plimpton, who ends up going straight through and sliding down the palace's armor room, knocking over all the metal pieces. In the queen's bedroom, Dr. Mudfly is treating the monarch with some leeches when Lord Badgley turns up to ask how the monarch is, only to be told that she won't last more than a week. Through the corridors, Doolittle and his animals approach the royal chambers when the guards find Tommy hiding and begin to take him away as an intruder, but Lady Rose manages to help by saying that he is the vet's apprentice, 
allowing the boy to stay in the palace for a while longer. At the queen's bedside, Doolittle arrives with his animals, who quickly take over the place, as well as asking Jip to sniff the monarch in an attempt to find anything strange. After a short time sniffing around, the dog senses that something is wrong and the vet sticks his face in the aquarium to ask the octopus if he's seen anything different, discovering that the queen has fallen ill after drinking some tea. With the help of Dab Dab, Doolittle expels everyone from the royal quarters and shows his encyclopedia of poisons to Jip, asking the dog to try to recognize the scent he smelled on the woman. After leafing through a few pages, the vet discovers that the queen's illness has been caused by a plant known as belladonna flower, an extremely dangerous plant that will take the queen's life in a few days if they don't find the antidote. To save her life, Doolittle says they must collect the fruit of the Tree of Eden while he approaches a painting, taking the opportunity to leave a woodworm working as a spy. Finally, he leaves Jip as a watchdog protecting the queen while asking Rose not to allow her mother to eat anything prepared by other people. With a long journey ahead of him, Doolittle puts the animals in the carriage and dismisses Tommy, forcing the boy to return home against his will. Even after not seeing his nephew for so long, Tommy's uncle is still very impatient and orders him to go to bed, leaving the boy alone in bed when Polly and her friend Betsy show up to rescue him, taking him to become an apprentice veterinarian. With the boat about to set sail, everyone gets on the giraffe and heads for the harbor, pursued by a group of policemen on horseback. To escape, Betsy climbs onto a cart and jumps over the city walls, leaving the officers behind and clearing the way for them to make their way to the port, but when they get there, Doolittle's boat has already left and they are forced to run for a bridge under construction. In order to get Tommy to reach the boat, Betsy throws the boy into a pulley elevator and activates the mechanism to make the object descend, but the equipment ends up jamming because a knot in the rope and Tommy is forced to jump, slipping through the sails and holding onto the ship's rope to swing himself down into the ship. Furious as he is, Doolittle has no choice but to accept Tommy into the crew, leaving him in charge of all the ship's cleaning. At Buckingham, Mudfly is trying to find out what the octopus said when Lord Badgley turns up to say that he is sending a frigate to follow Doolittle, asking the doctor to command the ship in order to eliminate his rival while he stays at the palace and tries to finish off Lady Rose, leaving the way clear for him to take over the crown. Unaware that they are in the sights of the British Navy, Tommy watches Doolittle living with the animals and tries to learn how to communicate with them which ends up distracting the vet in the middle of his boxing practice with Chi Chi and causing him to get punched in the face. After a long day's journey, Tommy is throwing some feathers into the sea when he spots a warship coming towards them. Knowing that they have no chance of winning, Doolittle decides to retreat, but as his boat is much slower than the British frigates, he sends out an emergency call across the ocean, which is quickly answered by a gigantic blue whale. As soon as the creature arrives, Doolittle puts on a scuba and jumps into the water with Yoshi, hooking a cloth ring onto the whale and giving the signal for Chi Chi to pull him back to the boat, but Mudfly realizes that they are fleeing and starts shooting at the vet's ship, causing the fearful gorilla to let go of the rope and leave the doctor alone at sea. Trying to save him, Tommy runs up to the deck and grabs the rope with all his might, pulling it back to the ship with the help of Yoshi, who jumps onto the whale's tail fin and helps the boy save the vet, but because of the dragging, the rope begins to give way and snaps in their hands, falling back into the water. Even so, Doolittle manages to save himself and jumps back onto the ship, finally recognizing that Tommy can be useful. In this way, they finally manage to gain some distance and escape from Mudfly's frigate, leaving them free to go to Monte Verde, the place where Lily was born and kept all her travel notes in a diary. In her adventures, the girl has managed to reach the Fruit of Eden and has traced the complete path to the island where the tree is. However, it won't be easy to get her diary, because King Rasuli, Doolittle's former father-in-law, has a deep grudge against the veterinarian, blaming him for his daughter's perishment. Because of this disaffection, the doctor and his apprentice disguise themselves and enter the palace unnoticed, but as the door they need to pass through is locked, Doolittle negotiates with a colony of ants, paying two sugar cubes for the insects to enter the security mechanism and deactivate it. Even so, Rasuli has placed some iron bars blocking the passage, making it impossible for him to continue in search of the diary, but Tommy manages to get through the gap and offers to continue alone, relying only on the help of a dragonfly called James. Following the corridor, Doolittle's apprentice arrives in the king's bedroom, which is infested with lions, forcing him to follow the bridges suspended from the ceiling to avoid attracting the feline's attention. With great care, Tommy finally manages to reach the royal treasure chamber and starts looking for the diary while James keeps an eye on the lions. However, the dragonfly ends up landing on one of the feline's whiskers, alerting the creature who gives a roar that wakes up Rasuli, spoiling the whole plan and causing them to be captured. With the prisoner in hand, 
the king of Monte Verde says that the diary is the only thing he has left of Lily and that the man shouldn't have come to his kingdom, but now that he's there, Rasuli blames him for his daughter's perishment and sentences him to stay in the cage with the lions. Before leaving, the man takes Tommy and chains Doolittle in the center of the cell, releasing a Bengal tiger called Barry to devour the still alive vet. Since he has already taken care of the feline, the doctor tries to convince him that he has returned because he missed him, making the beast lie down next to him pretending to have forgiven him, but when he gets closer, Barry reveals that he is only joking and attacks Doolittle again, forcing him to use his pocket watch to reflect the sun, making the tiger run after the point of light as if it were a simple kitten. In the banquet hall, Tommy sees James landing on a candy apple and asks the dragonfly to go to the boat to ask Polly for help, causing the macaw to leave the group of animals to rescue Doolittle, distracting the humans with a dynamite stick that blows up the entire castle armory. While Rasuli and his men run around thinking they're being attacked, Barry gets tired of chasing the point of light and lunges at Doolittle, forcing Polly to fly into the tiger's face to blind him, and is quickly knocked out. At that moment, Chi Chi sees Barry about to devour his friends and breaks the bars of the cage, entering the place to confront the tiger and save his companions. Even though he's extremely fearful, the gorilla goes all out on the predator and uses all the strength in his arms to immobilize him, hitting him with a huge knee to the lower body that leaves Barry totally disoriented. At that moment, Chi Chi jumps on the feline's back and starts squeezing his throat, which puts him to sleep in a few seconds. On the other side of the palace, Tommy takes advantage of everyone's distraction and goes to the treasure room to get the diary, running very excitedly towards the Doolittle, but as soon as he steps into the harbor, the British Navy appears and seizes the boy at Mudfly's behest, who steals the object from his hands. In possession of the diary, Buckingham's doctor gets into the boat and signals his men to destroy the veterinarian's ship, forcing the remaining animals to jump into the water to avoid sinking with the vessel. Since he can't swim, Plimpton starts to sink as soon as he touches the water and Yoshi has to dive in to save the ostrich, taking him to shore while the boat is lost at the bottom of the ocean. Completely defeated, Doolittle meets up with the rest of the group and tells them that he will be staying in Monte Verde from now on, working as the island's official doctor and veterinarian, but Rasuli appears and accuses him of having lost the diary while choosing a blade to finish him. After choosing the sword, he approaches Doolittle and tells him that he really wants to take his life, but he also says that his love for his daughter is greater and decides to allow him to continue his journey, giving him a boat as a gift so that they can continue in search of their goal. Even though the ship is falling apart, the group of humans and animals head out to sea, but as they don't know where to go, Doolittle sends some whales to track Mudfly's ship, following their lead until they reach the island where the Tree of Eden is. As soon as they arrive, the veterinarian's group starts climbing the mountain until they find a large cave full of bioluminescent fungi but the light ends up alerting Mudfly's men to their presence. With everyone under his power, the Buckingham doctor asks Doolittle for the exact location of the tree, but as he has no idea either, Mudfly takes a flag of the United Kingdom and sticks it in the ground while saying that he will revolutionize world medicine with the power of the fruit. Somehow, this activates some reddish fungi that reveal a gigantic dragon sleeping on the ceiling. At the sight of the countless humans, the winged creature begins to spit fire and Doolittle saves Mudfly, pushing him away from the flames and making the doctor believe that he has been saved to live a life of kindness and generosity, but the man ends up falling alone into the abyss. Desperate, Dab Dab ends up putting an egg out while Doolittle tries to work out an escape route, but Yoshi ends up trapped under the dragon's tail and they have to find a way to free him before they leave. To do this, Plimpton pecks at the creature like there's no tomorrow, while the vet tries to drive a dagger into the legendary animal, but this only serves to turn the creature's attention to Doolittle who is caught by the monster that continues to set the British army on fire. After dealing with all the humans, the flying monster turns to the vet with the intention of eliminating him, but Doolittle sees the skull of another dragon in the corner and says he understands the pain the female is going through, as he went through something very similar when his wife left. Still, the creature is determined to finish him off and spews a load of ooze at the vet before spitting out its jet of fire, but suddenly, the creature starts to feel very bad and releases Doolittle, ordering everyone to leave as they are not worthy of having the fruit of Eden. Realizing that she is in a lot of pain, the vet approaches the female and touches her abdomen, discovering that her stomach is badly damaged and about to become infected, meaning they need to perform an emergency extraction to save her life. To do this, Yoshi and the others put her aside and Dab Dab brings Doolittle a leak to perform the procedure, ridding the female's stomach of a bagpipe, dozens of armors and other junk she's eaten over the last century. After the procedure, the dragon decides to return the favor and shows the passage to the tree which is full of fruit, allowing them to take a sample and take it back to the queen, who at this point is on her last legs. Believing that his plan has worked, 
Lord Badgley begins his funeral speech and prepares to announce the monarch's perishment, but Doolittle manages to arrive in time and shows him that he has obtained the fruit to make the antidote. Furious, Badgley orders them all to be arrested and the royal guards begin to surround them, causing Doolittle to throw the object at Tommy who squeezes the fruit, dropping the essence of Eden on the queen's lips who wakes up almost instantly, being cured as if by magic. Realizing that he has nowhere to run, Badgley pretends to be happy and thanks Doolittle for saving the leader of the United Kingdom, but the vet goes to the woodworm who reveals to everyone that the lord is to blame for the queen's poisoning, as well as telling him that the bottle with the belladonna essence is hidden in his pocket. With no way out, Badgley grabs the dagger from one of the guards and tries to escape before being arrested, but Yoshi and Dab Dab manage to distract him while the other lords manage to capture him and take him straight to the dungeon. With that, Doolittle returns home and reopens the gates of the sanctuary to serve people, but unlike before when he did all the work himself, today he can count on his apprentice Tommy, who will one day become as good a vet as he is. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.